Welcome to the Sporting Life Info Goal Premier League season preview. We'll be running through all the best bets and just a general preview of the upcoming season with fans back in the stadium. Remember, you can get our exclusive betting guide at sportinglife.com or if you don't have the app already, head to the Android or iOS market to download it. So guys, we'll get straight into it. Last season, Manchester City winning the Premier League title at an absolute canter. How do we think it's going to go this year? It could be very similar. Um, you know, City, you could argue that they're a bit weaker at the moment because Sergio Aguero's left, so they've got no um, you know, extra striker on the bench, although Gabriel Jesus did spend most of his time on the bench anyway last season. Um, you know, Eric Garcia's left as well, for whatever that means. But it looks as though they're going to sign Grealish, potentially Kane, and if they sign both, it is pretty much curtains, in my opinion, because they're a team that generates so many good chances anyway, and if they finally have... You know, someone who can stay fit and healthy. Aguero had his issues with injuries for the last few seasons. If Kane can, comes in, he's going to get so many chances and they're going to win the league quite comfortably. But, you know, we, we saw Chelsea improve drastically under Thomas Tuchel. I think they deserve a mention. Um, defensively, they were sensational. Really, really good, conceding very few chances. Obviously, won the Champions League. Their issue, though, is that striker position as well. Um, you know, Timo Werner, I know you like him, Tom, mainly for his assists rather than his goals. <laughs> don't don't go on at Werner add. here, don't go on at Werner. <laughs> um, and, you know, Kai Havertz, can he, f uh, you know, fill that gap as, as, a, as a number nine? Maybe. They're definitely in the, in the conversation, as are Liverpool. I mean, their season was just completely disrupted with the injuries uh, at centre-half last term. And, you know, they're, they're a team that plays such a high octane level of football, and you know the players had played pretty much for the last two, three years straight. You know, Mohamed Salah and Sadio Mane had played in World Cups and, and African Cup of Nations in the summers, so they needed a, a bit of a break, and I think that that's what ultimately happened. They they sort of slowed down, and, and they'll be back fit and firing this time round. And just to qualify them, we're recording this around ten days before the start of the Premier League season, so I mean, there's every chance the Manchester City have already signed. Jack Grealish while you're watching this and or Harry Kane um, and I mean what kind of prospect could the rest of the league be up against Tom if they did incredibly manage to sign both which looks unrealistic but Manchester City with Jack Grealish in as well I mean wow even without him yeah I mean that team's phenomenal you say chance creation anyway you chuck Grealish into it it's incredible how they're going to work it who knows but it's a nice problem to have Kane as well, but to be fair to the chasing pack, they have also improved in their own way as well, as much as they can. Liverpool, of course, so injury hit last season. Uh, that centre-back position looks like it's hopefully for them going to be a bit more stable. Manchester United looking to bring in uh, Varane, Jadon Sancho as well. That wide position has been quite problematic for them. They tried to address it last summer, didn't quite work out um, in that way. Chelsea, who we've mentioned already, who saw drastic improvement uh, following the managerial change and obviously uh, won the Champions League, nearly won the FA Cup as well. So as much as all eyes are on City and will they win the Premier League, probably that's what they do now. They're, they're always up there. Um, the chasing pack have done their, played their part in trying to catch up as well. And maybe there might be points in the season where it becomes a, a bit tense. But um, for all of City's spending uh, and the way that they're looking to improve, to be fair, the other teams around them as well have addressed certain needs that they needed to. I mean, the context of the league, we're we still talking in terms of like the big six um, with the, the four teams that we've mentioned and then Tottenham and Arsenal. But Manchester City, four to six to win the league. Liverpool and Chelsea, both generally priced at five to one. Man United, eight to one. Tottenham, Arsenal, 66 to one. Leicester, 80 to one. And then you're looking at Leeds, 150 to one. So have we seen over this last couple of years a, a real separation in terms of squad quality? Oh, 100%, yeah, 100%. And then, you know, Man City in particular, they've got the money, they can continue to reinvest. Manchester United also. Um, that's where Arsenal and Tottenham have come unstuck, really. I mean, Tottenham, in their defence, they've been paying for the stadium, so that's been quite a lot of their income's been going towards that, uh, or sort of quite a lot of their outgoings anyway. Whereas Arsenal have just, just they've been spending the money, but just not very wisely. I mean, they spent seventy-two million pounds on Nicolas Pepe, who you know he could have got Emi Buendia for thirty million at that point. And you know, is there much difference between them? I mean, Pepe could improve. You know, I don't want him to rock up with twenty-five goals and make me look a fool. Like, he, there is there is potential to improve there, but you know, we're talking about strengthening his squad. Seventy-two million pound for a player who hasn't lived up to expectation. They could have bought two players and made the squad overall squad better. 
Um, yeah, we've definitely seen a divide in those uh, between a, a top four um, and, and Arsenal and Tottenham unfortunately falling by the wayside. And we saw that last season where neither of them finished in the top six. Tottenham finished seventh, Arsenal finished eighth. So they've fallen even below Leicester in that pecking order, in my mind anyway, who are a much better, much more well-run club than both North London sides. Uh, and, you know, say it quietly, they have a better manager as well. And just on that exact same thread that you were on there, your two best bets really in that market are both along those lines, aren't they, with how good Leicester are and also, I mean, how much the rest of the league are behind. Yeah, I was staggered to see um, the price available for Man City, Man United, Chelsea, Liverpool to be the top four in any order. You get it two to one. I, I just thought that's way too big. It's six to four in places, uh, which is what the price, similar price to what I'd have expected it. The Infocom model goes even shorter. We think that's around an even money shot, just purely because we've seen the, the golf in class. Um, not just from the, you know, the obvious, obviously the table, but the underlying numbers are, are, are completely a completely different level to the rest of the Premier League for those four teams. And as we've said, they are continuing to improve season on season. Liverpool had the defensive injuries, so they've gone out and signed another solid defensive set, uh, backup in, um, you know, from Leipzig. So they're now set in that position. Chelsea's squad is rivals Manchester City in terms of depth and quality in depth. And Manchester United's first eleven is, you know. I would go as far as saying the second best in the league when they're all fit um, and obviously their depth isn't as good as the likes of City and Chelsea, maybe even Liverpool, but they're just pulling away those four teams and you know, they're the ones, as I've said, that put the money in the pocket and spent the money um, that have stuck by and, and barring Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you'd say that the other three are the team that, that have got the best managers in, Tuchel, Klopp and Guardiola, I think they're the three best managers in the division. Um, so yeah, two to one around those four teams, which is the same four that finishes the top four last season and the season before that, um, you know, both on the actual and the expected table. So they've deserved to finish top four both times. Two to one, I just think is too good to turn down. And then, and then Leicester. Yeah, Leicester. Um, there's a couple of ways you can get on, on Leicester on board. I mean, they're around five to four, six to five to finish in the top six, which is obviously something they've done the last two seasons. I've gone the, a different direction and backed them without the big six, which is priced at around seven to four. The big six still includes Tottenham and Arsenal. I personally think Leicester will finish above both Tottenham and Arsenal again this season. So, you know, if they, if they do that, it's likely they're going to finish fifth. And I can't see that a West Ham or a Leeds or an Everton finishing in the top four above them. The same, even if they finish sixth Leicester, I can't see that fifth spot being filled by anyone else. So seven to four about Leicester. And as I've said, they, the manager's excellent. The recruitment's fantastic. You know, they've brought in Pat Sendaka, who looks like a really solid striker. Um, from Salzburg, they brought in Bubakari Samare as well, a midfielder, a bit of reinforcement there, which was an area where they looked a little bit weaker last season when Wilfred Ndidi was injured in particular. So they're continuously improving. And, and you know, even if James Madison does end up leaving, he's linked with Arsenal, even if he does end up leaving, I'm very confident that they'll be able to spend that money a lot wiser than the likes of Ars uh, Arsenal and or Tottenham would. Now you can get all of this in detail in our Premier League betting guide on sportinglife.com and also Jake's written the outright preview for the Premier League season as well. Not included in Jake Tips, he hasn't gone for an outright winner because I think he's so heavily on board with Manchester City, um, who are best price at four to six, which is, is really short. I'm going to really get you to stick your neck on the block here, Tom. Okay. Then Liverpool and Chelsea are at fives. Man United are at eight to one. If someone really did want to have a bet on that market, then because Man City are so short, is there potentially some value to be had if you did fancy one of those teams to kind of upset things? Yeah, I'd take Chelsea 100%, just the way that we saw the improvement since Tuchel came in and how good they were. And it's the problems that he got. He kind of complained about it last season. There's just too much quality up front and the way he wants to play seemingly suits that. That back three is going to get better based on the transfer rumours that we've heard already. By the time this goes out and you're watching it, it could be a completely different back three, who knows. Uh, but for me, I'd look at Chelsea. They're, they've an excellent second half of the season. I think there are players there as well. And when we talk best bets later, I'll mention them a bit more. But Kai Havertz, what, we forget what a disrupted season it was for him. Not only just moving to another country at such a young age in a global pandemic, he then had COVID. He was out for a while. I think it took him a bit of time to recover. Still had a good season. And even Timo Werner, for all the disastrous kind of campaign that was made out to be, 12 goals, 15 assists, I think, in all competitions. It's a great return. It's just that he wasn't the prolific striker that they perhaps hoped. So with another season under their belt, that they should perform. You've got the likes of Christian Pulisic, Mason Mount, 
uh, to come in there as well. Hakim Zayic, I think, will probably be the one to go if they had to. But there's so much quality there that I mean, five so to one. I think I'm just interested in them at that the, price. What you're not even mentioned is the fact. Could, could we probably think off the top of our head a, a team that's European champions and they're oh, yeah. five to one? So if you did have a fancy to back them, that's. Um, that's quite a big prize for a European champion to win the if domestic you, if you look, If you look at the forward lines, Manchester City and Chelsea, if you compare the squads, you can make a very strong case that Chelsea have got a better squad. And now, unlike the start of last season, they've got a manager who is experienced enough to then get the best out of them, play the way that they want to. And because City is such a short price, will City win the league? I mean, if they sign Kane and Grealish, it's difficult to say, oh, no, they're not going to. But at that price, I'd 100% be behind Chelsea to take them on. And it showed they beat them multiple times, not just in the Champions League final, but I think four times, is it, in the end, that they well, beat... Well, there's the FA Cup semi, which is another big occasion. They beat the them league. in the league as well, yeah. So. And then the Champions League final. So he's already done him three times in that short space of time. So, uh, yeah, that price really interested in Chelsea. It is just just worth mentioning at this point that if you were, you know, if, if you were a little bit cautious on the Chelsea shout, which is understandable because Man City are so good, maybe looking at them to win the league without Manchester City at a decent price as well. I think they're around two to one. They're going head to head effectively with Liverpool and Manchester United. Manchester United, as we've said, their manager isn't as good as Tuchel, Klopp, Guardiola, and Liverpool will have to deal with an African Cup of Nations halfway through the season, which could see them lose the likes of Mane, Naby Keita, Mohamed Salah. Basically, you know, the, the two of their best attacking players, um, which could be a real issue for them and, and disrupt their season. I mean, we can probably keep this next section short and snappy. About we don't see another team getting in the top four. Um, Leicester, we think, are probably going to be the only team to be any kind of threat, um, looking like they're probably going to finish around fifth. What about any other team in the Premier League that we kind of we'd like the look of this season at the prices? Yeah, the, the, it pains me to say it, but Arsenal. Um, I've, I've been very down on Arsenal for the last three, four years and you know, been proven right because their, their downturn since Wenger left was quite catastrophic, really. I know Una Emery came in and did a little, little bits, got them to the Europa League finals, etc. But their underlying numbers throughout the last three or four years have been horrendous. They've, they've warranted to finish mid-table for the last two seasons. But under Mikel Arteta last season, we started to see some light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's been unfortunate in the sense that he's been stuck with players from two managers. Um, you know, Una Emery still some of Wenger's players in, in that squad. He's not really had a chance to refresh it with players that he wants. So instead, he's gone down the youth route and he's brought in the likes of Smith Rowe, Bukayo Saka, who've been really, really good for him. Um, and we started to see real improvements towards the back end of last season. He found a set way of playing, which wasn't the back three that he operated in the FA Cup when he won the FA Cup. More of a back four. He's brought in Thomas Partey, who is a really top-notch destroyer in the midfield. Um, and you know, you've know you still got the likes of Aubameyang who can score goals up there. Lacazette had a decent season last time round. Um, and they actually finished sixth in goals expected goals table. So they were unfortunate not to finish higher up in the league than they did. Um, couple that with the fact that they did finish eighth, so they've got no European football this season, means that they can solely focus on the Premier League. Whereas even Tottenham, they, they're in the Conference League, Europa Conference League, which is now actually a thing. Um, and So they, they've got that to contend with. They've obviously got the, the Kane saga to contend with. Will he still be there? Uh, they've got a new manager to sort of bed in, uh, Nuno Espirito Santo. Um, you know, even West Ham, who was sensational last season, finishing sixth, they've got to deal with Europe, Europe, Europa League football. They've qualified for the, the group stages straight up. So they've got to deal with playing Thursday, Sunday, which is something that Arsenal and Spurs usually struggle with anyway. So a, a team like West Ham and a squad like West Ham might even find that even more difficult. So I think it's all fallen into place for Arsenal to put a real... Real good challenge for that top six, and I was surprised to get eleven to eight for them to, to finish in that top six with Spurs being um, strongly favoured, Leicester around that mark as well. So yeah, that, that for me that that's 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 the bet in the top six market, and, and again I think that Arteta is a good man for that job, and uh, you know they've brought in Ben White, which is an area of weakness at centre half. David Luiz obviously left, so there's a bit of refreshing there. That means they've now got Ben White and Gabriel, who looked really good at times last season as their centre halves, and, and that looks fairly solid in my book. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it, I'm seeing some light at the end of the tunnel for us. I'm not saying they're going to go and finish in the top four and really challenge those, those sides. I think there'll still be some real teething issues, but um, it is promising and I do think their price for the top six is a little bit wrong. So I don't know where, what you're thinking about that, Tom, but just a, just a quick word on Ben White. There's a really good feature on the Sporting Life website that, that Tom's written about 
how Ben White fits into Mikel Arteta's mm -hmm. philosophy and how he could improve Arsenal for this season. In one word, are you on side with Arsenal top six at 11 to 8 or not? One yes. word. Yes. There we go. Yeah. I like that. So if you had to, you know, pick another bet away from us looking at how we think that top four and even you know, Leicester being the, the next best of the lot, is there another team that you think they might, you know, spring a couple of surprises or be and you better can't than you expected? I mean, <laughs> I mean, as the if you're an anti Big Six sentiment that's growing in the Premier League after the failed European Super League, we're probably pinning our hopes to Leicester. Villa, now Grealish is gone and Leeds and just great fun. Who knows what turns up with them? I mean, again, the data says otherwise. I wouldn't... I'm intrigued by Crystal Palace this season. I'm genuinely intrigued by how they're going to do. Their squad's too old. They get criticised for having old players. They then go the other way and now they're criticised because their players are too young and they're going to get relegated for that reason. I like their signings. I think they've looked to the division below and for the prices they've got some of these players at as well really interesting bit of business it's the unknown that comes with crystal palace and people expect them to go down so it's pushed their price out the other way look i wouldn't be surprised if they were down there whatsoever but equally i wouldn't be overly surprised to see them in that top half do if you they trust were getting... the error I, I think it's made out that he's a worse manager than he is i think that his profile as we've seen with the conor gallagher signing I think who he is may attract players to come and play for him. Gallagher, I think three, four Premier League uh, clubs wanted him. He chose to go to Palace. And I think Vieira was a big part of that. I'm not entirely sold. I'm not completely sold on it. But equally, like I'm saying, that I wouldn't be surprised if they did get those few shock results, if they could then pick up points here and there. And just one of these teams that quietly go about the business. I'm not saying they're going to break into the Champions League, but you could probably get decent odds on them looking around top half mid-table um, because they're so heavily fancy for relegation that if there was a team to watch of the existing ones that have decided no we're going the other way this time we've had this core we a lot of players are out of contract let's do this route instead it could go all wrong but equally it could work out well and maybe it takes some time to bed in um, and, and hopefully they'll, they'll give Vieira the time to, to do it. So I wouldn't be overly surprised if maybe they did spring a few surprises. So Crystal Palace said uh, to finish in the top half, 11 to two, and uh, they're really at the, they're in that split. So above them then Southampton are generally priced at three to one and everybody else is, is shorter. Uh, but then Crystal Palace are in that selection of teams, Newcastle six to one, Burnley similar. Brentford nine to one, Norwich twelves, Watford twelve. So um, I can I can see where you're going with that. It's, it's really a bit of feel it, like it's a it's a bit of a value. Who play, knows? Right? Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's, it's, a, it's a good outside of it. Yeah, it look, really they, it, could, it could go wrong, and I'm I, I'm perfectly prepared to accept that that they might finish in the bottom three. Fine, but at eleven to two, there's a lot of question marks on the right side of things that then could come off, and that eleven to two might look good at one point. It might not, but with the uncertainty, I'm happy at that price just to go, you know what, it, it could happen. So from listing those odds then, we kind of, uh, everybody probably knows who the, the relegation candidates are for the season. So I'll go through the, the relegation odds then. Norwich are generally a shade of odds on, even money for the drop. Watford right there alongside them. Brentford a, a little longer, seven to five on relegation. Then it's Palace, Burnley, Newcastle, Southampton in that order with the prices getting a little bit bigger. Um, who do we like at the prices and who do we think is, is probably going down to the Skybet Championship? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a difficult season for Norwich and Watford. I like Watford more for relegation than I do Norwich just because they're a club where it's like a soap opera, isn't it? Like anything can happen season on season. They might end up going through three or four managers and still going down. Um, I don't think their squad is... is as good as Norwich's, in terms, especially the starting eleven. I, I trust Norwich's starting eleven a bit more. I'd, like I said, I think both are rightly firm favourites to go down. But I would definitely be siding towards Watford. Um, I know they've got a couple of good players there. Ismail Assar is still in the building. Um, you know, they've signed Josh King, who, as you said earlier, was coveted by quite a few teams last season. Um, Troy Deeney is still knocking around. So th there's some there's some good players, some experienced players in that squad. But yeah, you don't know what you're going to get with Watford. I mean, if they lose the first four games, then the manager's getting sacked and all of a sudden you're having to rebuild again. Um, so that they, they'd be the one from of a short price that I, I quite like for relegation. Of a bigger price, 
I think Southampton are interesting. Um, I know that they've got a coach that quite a few people like in Ralph Hasenhutl. I think that he's, you know, he's a very good coach, but he just hasn't been given any support whatsoever in the in the transfer market. And, and you know, we're, we're seeing that even more so. Um, you know, Danny Ings could be on his way out. James Ward-Prowse, I think Aston Villa had a bid for him recently at the time of recording um, that was turned down. So it could be a case where they lose their best two players. Um, and they finished the season horrendously from a, a you know a, an actual results perspective, and the underlying numbers were really really disappointing. So um, they, they are a team on a downward trajectory, if you like. And, and usually you like to look at someone who finished last season really really poorly, um, hasn't really changed much. The squad's still the same, and there's every chance that Harson Hootle, rather than getting sacked, just walks away because he's he's very very unhappy in, in the sort of help that he's been given. I mean, just on that, um, South, on that Southampton point, Jake, they are a, they're, they're a really interesting point because if we think back to, um, I know the season started a little bit later, but sort of 10, 12 games in last season, the, the two stories were, you know, Tottenham, brilliant, Jose Mourinho's come in, he's turned it around, they're going to win the league. Uh, Southampton were top of the table as well really early in the season, but <laughs> they ended up 15th at the end of last season. So, I mean, the drop-off was just incredible. Um, losing another game where they let in um, nine goals, so any team that has the capacity to defensively capitulate like that then surely has to be some kind of candidate for relegation. You take Danny Ings goals out of that team and all of a sudden it, it's a real struggle. So the price about them is it's five to one. Um, so I'll throw it over to Tom. Then what do you see Southampton wise? Yeah, a hundred percent. You mentioned them top of the table. My, I, I back them before last season to be the best of the rest to win without the top six. So it was essentially like I built this big Jenga tower and I had to slowly watch it collapse and that was it all gone. I so, uh, I mean, that phenomenal, it was a phenomenal start to the season. You know, there was the a weird kind of domino effect of the US president tweeting stop the count and then Southampton getting relegated in May 2022. Um, it, like you said, the, the fact that when we say the 9-0 result, we now have to say which one suggest you know the issues and the fact that they can capitulate like that what price do you reckon you get on a 9-0 this season I involving mean, Southampton I mean there was a great moment with that no value the uh <laughs> the have we all seen the Twitter account of have they mentioned the 9-0 yet on that night that Twitter account couldn't believe it's luck that it was another one that <sighs> the thing with Southampton is that in terms of the transfer incomings there's never anything that really grabs your eye it's always a bit of reluctance to do anything there needs to be some injection of something into this team that you just can't see coming in this window whatsoever. You mentioned the Danny Ings saga. It just needs something coming in to really lift everyone because how many times have we seen like Leicester, people back Leicester to win the title on the basis of they finish the season strongly? Southampton are the complete opposite. It was like they were just waiting for the season to end around February time. You could argue it's the same for Sheffield United last season. They finished the, the previous season really poorly. I mean, yeah. they were in the top six places at one point and then ended up finishing just about hanging on to mid-table and they ended up carrying on that trajectory downwards. I think that it's probably, much like at the other end, City's short odds have influenced this. I think the short odds of the promoted teams have influenced how big Southampton's price is. I'm not confident enough has happened this summer to just make me go, it's going to be a lot better this year. What saved them last year was the fact they had such a good start. They were top of the league at one point in early November. That pretty much ended up saving them for relegation. If it doesn't happen this season, let's be honest, who's going to expect Southampton to be top at that stage? It could be, it could be real problematic for them. They could be in and around and that price is a real value play, I think. Well, thanks for watching the Premier League season preview and um, please read everything on site, even if you're a Southampton fan. Sorry for... <laughs> Ending on a bit of a downer for Good Saints sale. supporters. Um, and remember, we've got everything that you need in the Premier League betting guide on site in exhaustive detail. But also look out for all of our anti-post previews, including a golden boot preview, relegation outright and Premier League specials as we build up to the start of the Premier League season. Thanks for watching.